X-Men Origins Wolverine is a game that asks the question. On the subject of chopping up legions of soldiers with sharp claws, when does it get old? The answer, not as soon as you might think. I can see why this is so popular. Based on the awful film of the same name, Origins is without a doubt one of the best movie tie-ins of all time, and even just as a hack and slash game, it's one of the most satisfying and visceral experiences I've ever had. Originally released in 2009 to coincide with the film, there was actually two different versions of the game. One for the PS2 and the Wii, developed by Amaze Entertainment, and then a more violent version called the Uncaged Edition, developed for the PS3 and the Xbox 360. Now this one was developed by Raven Software, the same guys who made such absolute classics as Hexen, Soldier of Fortune, and Jedi Academy. Yeah, years before they were shipped off to the COD mines on Mars. Around 2009 was also when we had that peak era for edgy video games as well, around the time we had things like The Darkness, Infamous, and Manhunt 2. And Origins' mature content fits right into that mold, you know, assuming you're playing the Uncaged Edition and not that version released for the PS2. <laughs> story in this one loosely follows the same plot as the film, kind of, written by a guy named Mark Guggenheim, who's also responsible for writing the Green Lantern movie, though we won't hold that against him because he also did work on Singularity. At the center of the whole thing is a series of flashback sequences taking place in Africa, back when Logan was working with Team X alongside his big bro Victor Creed, Wade Wilson, and Wraith. You always knew how to make an entrance. Thanks. I was talking to her following orders to find some kind of precious mineral being held in an ancient village. And the narrative keeps shifting back and forth to this point in time, filling in the blanks as to what's happening in the present. Because in the present time, Logan is randomly attacked by Victor, who also seemingly kills his girlfriend. At which point his former commanding officer, Stryker, conveniently shows up and offers to replace his bones with adamantium, which turns him into the Wolverine. I can give you the tools to defeat him. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. From there, it's a matter of avoiding Stryker and his soldiers, who for some reason have foolishly turned on him, along with reuniting with his old crew to find out what's going on, which overall is a much more interesting story than the one we got in the film. Oh, he's gonna talk, all right. <laughs> Not that that's too much of a brag, I mean, it can't be that hard to write a better plot than the one we got in what's one of the shittiest comic book movies ever made. Hey, little brother. Long time no see. Do you think the constant flashbacks to those Africa sequences are a bit jarring, and it also doesn't make a lick of sense how all the upgrades you unlock in the modern timeline somehow carry over into the past. But I do at least appreciate the writers trying to differentiate the game somewhat from the movie, which is something that was sorely needed. This is insanely brilliant. Plus, I appreciate the way this game interprets Mystique's character, and I genuinely don't think she's ever been portrayed in a bad way, even though the way she looked in the X-Men cartoon is still the all-time best. Perfection. I'll take care of this one. Either way though, this still has just enough of those moments from the movie to keep the whole thing feeling connected. Like the whole bar fight against Logan and Victor. You wanna try that again? Busting out of the Alkali lab, through to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wade on the top of a nuclear cooling tower. It's even got this whole epilogue sequence showing off this sentinel ravaged future, which hints at a sequel that we obviously never got. I've got just the tools to fix it. What definitely adds a much needed factor of authenticity to is that they actually got a lot of the actors to return to lend their voice talents. Which means you've got Hugh Jackman voicing Logan and Liv Schreiber as Victor. Didn't need the help. I was always better at this part than you. And can I just say, aside from me liking Jackman for the obvious reasons, you know, that he's one of my fellow countrymen, you've also just got to give the guy props for clearly putting effort into his voice work. From all the dialogue in the cinematics through to his various grunts throughout the gameplay, and if there's one thing this guy's mastered, it's the art of growling into a microphone like some kind of wild animal. <laughs> now visually, Origins is the most 2009 looking game ever made, running on the Unreal Engine 3 be because of course it is, and having some pretty crappy looking character models, with the kind of texture streaming that the engine was well known for back in the day. 
Now granted, this was still pretty early on, and the Unreal Engine was only a couple of years old, but let's just say that it hasn't quite aged as gracefully as some other titles might have. What the engine does best though is the way that it handles Logan's injuries and the overall violence and gore. And I say that because Origins has a whole heap of hilariously over the top gore effects with some really satisfying animations when you're cutting people to ribbons with your adamantium claws. And just the kind of thing you'd expect from the same people who made the Soldier Fortune games. Sure doesn't waste time either, man, and you're barely five minutes into the story when you pulled a chopper pilot out of the cockpit through the window, I might add, and shoved the guy's heads into the rotor blades. I mean, compare that to the first level of the PS2 game where you're just fighting the same one or two lumberjacks over and over. You ready for the pain? Whenever you take serious damage during combat, which is something that happens frequently, you can visually see the wounds on Logan's body and even more than that, see it slowly being healed in real time as that healing factor kicks in. Even his shirt can be ripped apart slowly the more you take damage to the point that it's just worn away completely. It's also to one of the few instances in gaming where a regenerating health system actually makes a bit of sense, you know, given Wolverine's well-known self-preservation abilities. The inclusion of a scan mode as well, which highlights enemies and points of interest, again has a bit of a basis given that guy's animalistic instincts, truly capturing that vibe of playing as a guy who's the ultimate apex predator. And on that front too, like I really do have to praise just how well this game puts you into that role of Wolverine and there's really very few superhero games that totally capture that feeling of the character they're based off. I mean, Batman in the Arkham games is obviously one of them, the Punisher is another, and then Wolverine Origins is right up there too. I, I wrote a blog post a while ago about why I f***ing hate video games, because this is what it does, it appeals to like the male fantasy. And if there's another game that captures the joy of ripping apart bad guys with claws over and over, well, I've yet to see it. So it's easier to see why people loved this game so much back in the day, and also why the demo was such a strong hook, considering that first level alone is just utter chaos, but in the best way possible. You start off free falling from the sky using some poor asshole as a landing platform, through to barely escaping a collapsing rope bridge like you're in the Temple of Doom or something. to then finally leapfrogging from boat to boat as you move up river. And to be honest, like, I actually found it genuinely hard to finish this level without passing out, seeing as most of the blood flow went from my head downwards to sustain my throbbing erection. The game always seems to know when to take control away from the player, but then more importantly, when to give it back, to, compared to so many modern games where it seems you spend more time watching the action as opposed to controlling it. Now normally, I'm not a huge fan of these kind of hack and slash games that have like a bazillion combos to learn, but Origins somehow manages to make me break that rule. And the reason for that is because it manages to teach you all these moves in a really intuitive way. Basically, you've got a light and a heavy attack combined with a jump, a throw, a dash, a block, and a dodge. But the vast amount of ways you can expand upon this is where it starts to get really interesting. For instance, combining light and heavy attacks alone offers up a whole range of different combos, some of which can be good against single or multiple enemies. Dodging can be used for its intended purpose, but if you dodge into an enemy, Logan's going to leap over them and attack from behind, which becomes pretty handy against certain enemy types. Throwing enemies is really effective too, and arenas are often full of spiky objects just begging to be put to use. You can even chain throws over and over, pounding someone into the ground repeatedly like it's the Hulk throwing Loki around in the Avengers. And then on the other hand, if you grab an enemy but don't want to throw them, you can also opt for a quick kill, which is entirely unique for each different enemy type. And outside of an easy time button prompt, it's often effortless to pull off. 
whenever you kill an enemy, Logan gains a bit of rage, and when this is high enough, you can then unleash one of your four rage moves. The most basic one is the claw spin, where Logan does a 360 spin with his arms outstretched, kind of like Zangief's lariat move in Street Fighter 2, just with more dismemberment. <laughs> The claw drill, on the other hand, is kind of self-explanatory. Logan turns into a human corkscrew and flies forward, slicing up anyone caught in his path. And then what's more of a buff to the combat than an outright move is the berserk mode, which heightens the damage you do and also refills some of your health. And then finally, you've got the Claw Cyclone, which is like the Claw Spin, but on steroids, ending with a slam to the ground that knocks back anyone nearby. Now visually, these are pretty satisfying to watch, and when you've got like a cluster of enemies all bunched together, and unleash a move that manages to hit them all at once, well, it's the stuff that boners are made of. And I can't help but think too that a lot of these moves seem like something out of the Marvel vs. Capcom games, with the Claw Drill instead being called the Drill Claw. And even some of Wolverine's basic combos look similar, with Origins also having some basic air juggling, which again was a huge mechanic in the Marvel vs. Capcom games. <laughs> This is also before Arkham Asylum came out, you know, before that point where almost every single melee combat game focused around countering. And while Origins does have the option to block and even parry if you time it right, I found that it's often easier to just bombard enemies with attacks, you know, instead of waiting for the opportune time. Though I will say that I find it hilarious how Logan can somehow deflect back rockets just with his claws. But the move you'll be using the most by far though is the lunge. Now with this you can lock onto an enemy with the R1 button and then leap towards them with L1. Then choosing to either hold them down and strike them over and over, hit them with a heavy attack which will often instantly kill them, or finally just throw them into nearby enemies or off ledges. This move is really so effective and commonly used throughout the entire campaign that I started to wonder early on when I was playing this that it would have to get boring at some point. But you know what? Truthfully, it really never does. You often even have to use it for just basic navigation, using it so Logan can clear gaps and reach enemies that were otherwise out of reach. The way that they balanced it out is that it doesn't work against every single enemy type, which makes sense because otherwise you'd use this move and nothing else. But it's still a really handy tool in Logan's moveset, which always seems to have a neat way of being integrated. Like to have the guy kamikaze leap onto a chopper and hack the engine to pieces bit by bit. Yeah, stuff like that. Most of the combat in this game is against more or less just regular soldiers who can do little more than just be a walking pinata, waiting to be put out of their misery. But when you get into that rhythm of leaping from bad guy to bad guy, mercilessly cutting them down while they're hopelessly peppering you with bullets in like a futile attempt to defend themselves, I mean it's just absolute peak power fantasy stuff. I do think a few encounters can definitely force you to overuse this by putting like 10 different guys with guns on opposite sides of the arena, which, you know, just kind of forces you to lunge back and forth as quick as you can to take them out. But I think mostly you'll be having too much fun to really give a shit, and those slow motion finishing shots you get able to see someone's gory demise frame by frame, just like the icing on the blood soaked cake. <laughs> You got knocked the fuck out! The definite highlight here is the whole Alkali Lab chapter after Logan first gets his adamantium, because there's always just something so primal about levels set in labs where you're being turned loose. Followed by the level set after that in this snowy forest, which again reminded me just how much I love environments set in the snow. And I think between snow and rain as a backdrop, it has to be one of the comfiest possible aesthetics. To top all of this off is a leveling up system where you can put points into upgrading all of Logan's abilities. Every time you kill an enemy, you gain XP, and then each time you level up, you gain a health boost, along with getting two skill points. And Origins always seems to level you up at just the right moment to stop your interest from waning. I mean, I lost count the amount of times I told myself I was going to stop playing at the next checkpoint, only to level up and then just feel like I had to keep going. You know, if only to see how that new upgrade I got benefited me in combat. And then the next thing I knew, another half hour had passed, and I'd already leveled up twice again. Oh, 
There's other bonuses to find as well, like Wolverine figurines, which unlock alternate outfits, and even other power-ups to boost your health and your rage meter. And that's really the thing this game does so well. Yes, it's repetitive and it's kind of simple, but it also somehow manages to find this groove where your attention never really wanes. That is, until you get about two-thirds into the game, where it goes from being an utter power fantasy and often becomes a bit more of a slog. Now, I think the first main issue I have with this campaign is that some of the levels just seem to go on for a little bit too long. And look, man, I don't have anything wrong with getting more value out of a game, but a lot of these levels could have been half the length and still as entertaining. Because after you've been playing that same mission for 20 minutes, it all does start to feel a bit directionless when there's still no end in sight. More than that though, it's roughly around the two thirds or so mark when they start to introduce some really annoying enemy types, a lot of which are just an absolute nuisance to deal with. The first one of these are the ghosts. Now, these are guys who can cloak and turn invisible with the extra benefit of also being armed with a shotgun, which they're not shy about using. You'll rarely fight one of these guys at a time and to make it even more annoying, every time they hit you with the shotgun, Wolverine gets stunned and knocked back. So, now imagine what that's like when you got four or five of these assholes at once. The best tactic here, as far as I can tell, is to use the quick kill, which admittedly is pretty badass, where you force the shotgun back towards their face and blow it off. And yeah, that's kind of awesome the first few times you do it, but once you've come up against like the 10th group of them and are just button mashing through those prompts to clear the room and be done with it, well, it's obviously not as awesome. The next one I really dislike are the shifters. Now, these are these annoying, apparently female, blue enemies that teleport all over the place, attacking and knocking you on your ass. And when you've got a couple of these things around you at once, well, forget about doing anything else other than focusing on them first and foremost. Their attacks are so erratic as well that it's really hard to even determine when you're supposed to be able to counter them. And the only times I seemed to get off a parry just felt like complete luck. Visually too, they're also kind of weird, really sticking out a lot against the rest of the enemies, with this blue glow that's just a bit of an outright eyesore. Plus, they look like the kind of thing that the Silver Surfer would swipe left on. There's a few robot types that get introduced as well, and I will say that I usually hate fighting robots in video games, so I should bitch about these ones in Origins. But truthfully, although they can be as annoying as a mosquito bite on your taint, you don't really see them that often, so I don't see this being a huge dilemma. The absolute worst ones in the game by far, without a shadow of doubt, are the assassins. Thankfully, which you only encounter near the end of the story. Now, these are these four-armed, ponytail-wearing skanks armed with a giant spear, and aside from the almost impossible task of deflecting their attacks, they've also got an outright broken ability to be able to just run right up to you and stab through Logan completely. Yeah, man, full-on run a spear through his torso and impale him, at which point, mashing the circle button is the only way to get free. And this becomes utterly fucking broken when you've got like three or four of them on you at once. As you get into this nasty loop of being skewered by them one after the other. Like they're running a goddamn train on the poor guy. Now as far as I can tell, there doesn't really seem to be any way to avoid it. You know, unless you just get super lucky and dodge at the right time. Because the actual build up for this attack is literally frames of animation. Bullshit! And look, man, I don't mind a super powerful enemy with a damaging attack like this, but at least give me some kind of wind-up animation, you know, instead of them just teleporting into me within a nanosecond. Why are you the way that you are? Honestly, every time I try to do something fun or exciting, you make it not that way. It got to the point where if I had the option, I just ran past them entirely. In fact, one of the last levels in the game is this full-on battle between mutants and striker soldiers. And you'll see these guys fighting other enemies frequently, which I took as an opportunity to just avoid them. Plus, is it any kind of coincidence that both of these enemy types, you know, the worst ones in the game, are both female? I mean, did someone at Raven Software have like a bad breakup when they were working on this? <laughs> It's not a game that really gets harder, more so it just gets more annoying. Because the more you level up, the more health points you get, to the point that it almost becomes impossible to be killed, you know, on normal difficulty anyway. So to be turned into this unkillable punching bag by all these enemies, you know, watching Logan get thrown around like a pinball, it just kind of deflates the power fantasy. But again, I don't know, maybe it's on brand, considering Logan spent most of those live action movies getting his ass handed to him. Brother, this guy!
I stinks! The boss fights, though, is where this thing truly shits the bed, if only for the reason of just how lazy it often is, flat out reusing some of these over and over. Early on in the game, you fight a Leviathan, which is like a big lumbering juggernaut that swings with its massive hands and attempts to charge into you. Pretty simple encounter, you dodge roll to the side to avoid getting hit, leap on its back when it's stunned, stab it a few times before jumping off and repeating until it finally goes down. And it sounds fine, right? Only, they reuse this mini boss type enemy a good 10 or so times throughout the course of the campaign, and the strategy for the fight never changes once. They've even got the gall to call it a Wendigo the next time you fight one, even though the strategy is more or less completely unchanged. So as a result, it's just the exact same fight over, and over, and over. One level even has you fighting two of them at once, which is about as fun as you'd expect. And even then, at the end of that same level, you have to fight four of them back to back. And not only is this just kind of lazy, but it's also just blatant filler. Because the time it takes to kill these guys can't really be sped up. I mean, it does go a bit quicker when you upgrade Logan's claws, but it's still the same tedious process. One point they stopped showing up for a bit, and I started to think that maybe they'd moved on. Only, nah, I was wrong. Because in the final level, you have to fight two more of them, you know, just to really rub it in. They do pull the same thing with a fight against a prototype Sentinel, only at least this time you only have to fight it twice, which is an act of mercy in comparison. The fight against an actual fully functional Sentinel is admittedly epic, being this large scale showdown against one of those iconic mutant killing robots, where you need to trick it into attacking electrical panels as you slowly hack away at its hands and feet. But then even this thing, man, it just goes on and on and really outstays its welcome, not even ending after that first phase, because after that it takes off into the sky where you've got to chase after it in freefall, cutting through chunks of debris before catching up to it and hacking away at it another three times. And I just kind of feel like Raven Software nailed the visual spectacle of these fights, but just not the gameplay aspect. Which is why every single boss fight is just you repeating the same one or two strategies in autopilot mode until it's all over. Same thing with the fight against the blob. I mean, the image of this morbidly obese, or as we call it in 2024, average body-sized dude, bull charging through a supermarket and destroying everything is pretty awesome. But then the fight itself is just one note. Wait for the blob to tire himself out, jump on his back, stab him over and over while getting a piggyback ride and then repeat. There's an entire level almost dedicated to a showdown with Gambit where you're pursuing him across an entire casino, getting into all these random encounters along the way too, which is definitely a highlight. But again, like every time you actually catch up to Gambit and get back to fighting him, that strategy again, like it never really differs. And if I can say at this point as well, they really turn this guy into the most insufferable prick here. Oh, uh, wait, wait, I'm not. Two years I rotted in that hellhole. I ain't going back actually really like Gambit as a character. He was always one of my go-tos when I was playing X-Men vs. Street Fighter or Marvel vs. Capcom. But even before that, when I was a younger kid watching that old X-Men cartoon, again, I really liked the guy, specifically for the fact that he knew that Rogue would kill him if he touched her, and yet he was still more than willing to clap those cheeks. That's not funny. Or do you want to end up in a coma? He's just always been one of my favorite X-Men, and yet after spending an hour or so of my life fighting the guy, now I wouldn't give two shits if they found his kidneyless body in a dumpster behind a gas station. It all just kind of reminded me of the bosses in the 2009 Wolfenstein reboot, which Raven also developed. Because that game also had a lot of crappy boss fights, but then on the other hand, really fun and chaotic gameplay in between. And it got me to thinking that maybe Raven Software just can't design good bosses. Origins definitely redeems itself for the final level, I think, being a return to power fantasy mode and having a pretty fun showdown against Victor and Wade. And I think the ending is pretty spot on too, leaving things open-ended with that brief glimpse into the horrific future that awaits all mutants. And as we all know, all of the best fiction involves some kind of future where AI runs amok. He ain't lying. Either way, though, issues aside, Origins was the kind of game that I simply couldn't put down until I finished it, which is more or less what I ended up doing. Took me about six or so hours in total to get through, and after you've beaten the game, you unlock hard mode, along with the option to replay levels and find all the collectibles and acquire all those hidden outfits. And when all those pieces fall into place, it's kind of insane just how much a 15-year-old game can be so fun. I 
I don't really know what's happening anymore with Insomniac's upcoming Wolverine game, but regardless, after having played this, they've got a tough act to follow. And as long as they don't include those fucking assassins, we should be fine. <laughs> 